Hey, my friends, we are back and looking at our next lesson uh, in our unit on polynomials and quadratics. Uh, and what we're going to focus on today will be multiplying polynomials. Uh, so if you remember last time, we added and subtracting. Uh, this time, we'll be multiplying. Um, so here's what I'd like you to do. Um, once again, you see three warm-up problems. They're at the top of our note sheet here. Uh, so go ahead and uh, do those three problems. All right, so you can pause the video or you can sit here and listen to a little Frozen 2 soundtrack action. All right, is that, how's that? Reminds me of childhood, some 80s kind of tunes there. All right, you give those three a shot and then I'll work these. Warm in your heart, not just with math, but good tunes too. All right, so hopefully you have finished those problems. Uh, and so let's take a look and see how you did. I know it's hard to turn Frozen 2 off. Oh, it just gets me every time. All right, so now let's uh, take a look at our first problem here. Now, when we're multiplying polynomials, we're really doing two things. We're really multiplying, all right, the coefficients, which in both of these are ones, all right? All right, so we're really doing 1 times 1, which is 1, and then we're doing x times x. Uh, and then what we're doing here is really this is 1x, and this is a second x. So how many x's are we multiplying? We're multiplying 2. So we have 1x squared. All right, now when we come to a second example, uh, now we're going to use the distributive property. We're going to take whatever is on the outside here, and we're going to distribute that to everything on the inside and once again man this system is really dragging all right um, so let me try to erase that again here I'm not really sure what's happening here it's like when I'm working and practicing before I turn the video on uh, it's doing a really good job then it gets really slow and bogged down all right so let's try this again and let's see so when I distribute x squared to x I'm gonna distribute x squared, and that arrow is gonna go really wide here. Uh, it's still kind of pointing to x cubed, but x squared times x would be x to the third power. All right, because I have two x's here, I have one x's here, so I'm multiplying three x's. And then x squared times x to the third would be plus, all right, get rid of that and try this again. All right, and so plus x to the fifth power. All right, and then notice these are not like terms. All right, so if you remember from our last lesson, they're variables to the two different powers, so we cannot combine them. Now, when we look at our last example here, once again, it's very similar to what we just did. Okay, I'm going to distribute everything on the outside to everything on the inside. But now, 2 times 3 would give us 6 x times x, that's just like that first problem in our opener here, and that would just give us x squared. Then 2 times negative 4 would be negative 8. And then x times x to the third means we're multiplying 4x's, and I would represent that as 8x to the fourth. All right, so now if we think about what we just did with our examples up here, what we want to do is just briefly summarize these real quick. All right, um, down here. So when multiplying polynomial terms, you need to, we need to add those exponents. All right, and so that's really telling us how many of those things we're multiplying together. And we still, all right, multiply. All right, my writing's too big for the space here. Multiply, there's a Y. All right, the coefficients. Now, once again, if this gets a little bit confusing, you can kind of take a, a little bit of a longer route and think about what this really means, all right, as you go through this. So for example, when we think about x squared, that really means I have x times x. And when I have x cubed, that's three x's multiplied together, like so. So when I look, I'm really multiplying one, two, three, four, five x's, and that gets me two x to the fifth. All right, and so you can really kind of think about that as we multiply through. So it's like I have one x here, I have another x, so I'm multiplying two x's. I have one x here, I have three x's here, so I'm multiplying four x's. And so that's really what's happening is that we're summarizing this long bit of multiplication, right, in simplified terms. It's kind of like an abbreviation in mathematical terms 
when we write things as an exponent. All right, so let me slide our notes down here. Now, what we are going to do, all right, is use something called the area model. There's my cursor, it's back. All right, to help us um, multiply our terms and to keep track of our terms. So now when we think about this grid here, we have a four by four grid here. We have this length is four, this length is two, and what we wanna do is find the area of, all right, what's inside here. And the way we do that is we think back to some of the things you know about geometry, all right? And when you think back to geometry, when we find the area of a rectangle, it is, all right, length times width. So this would be eight inches squared, all right? And notice we did inch times inch, so we get inches squared, much like we did x times x, and we get x squared. And then I come to this. Now, this is four inches here, so this length is still four inches, but now this has changed to three inches. So I would do four inches times three inches, and that would give us 12 inches squared. All right, now if I come down to this box, now this is two and the width is two, so two times two would give us four inches squared. And then I come to this box, all right, and we have two inches times three inches, and that would be six inches and squared. Now if I think about this, I have 8 inches squared, I have 12 inches squared, 4 inches squared, and 6 inches squared. Now if we go back, notice this is a lot like what I did last time. These are all like terms because they're all in terms of inches squared. So 8 plus 12 is 20. 24, 30, so what this means is the total area would be 30 inches squared. And that is a really bad N. So let's try that again. Uh, strike it, reverse it, something like that in Charlie and the Cho Chocolate Factory musical. And then we have inches squared like that. And so notice we can just kind of take our time and find the area of each thing. Now, what we're going to do now is transition that and use that as the same model to multiply binomials. And so what we're going to do, we have this x here, and we're going to label this first length right here as x. We have a positive 3, so we're going to label this second length as plus 3. We have x minus 2, so we're going to label this as x, and this as minus 2. And remember, the x's are variables, and that just means we don't know what that particular length is yet. It could be 2, like it was up here. It could be 5. It could be 12. So what we're doing is representing this length in a general state, in an unknown state, with the variable x. But now, we can still find area, because notice we still have a rectangle. So the area of this rectangle is still going to be length times width, which is x times x, which we know from above is x squared. And then once again, I can come find the area of this box. And once again, if this length is x here, this length is x, so x times 3 would be a positive 3x. And then now I go to this box. The length is negative 2, the width would be x, and then negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And my final box now is this length is negative 2, this length is positive 3, negative 2 times positive 3 is a negative 6. Now, I want to do exactly what I did right here. I want to combine all my like terms. And this is where we're going to draw on what we talked about yesterday, all right, with adding and subtracting like terms, is that now, as I combine these, I want to only put my like terms together. Well, notice I only have the one x squared term here, so I can just bring that one x squared term down. Notice, now, my like terms here, I have x's here, and let's see if I can do this all the way around. It's slowing down, it's going out on me. No, go back. Get back here. Oh, and oh my goodness. That is now way off the screen. It's like it has a mind of its own. All right, so let me try to erase this part, but yeah, I think you guys get the idea that, um, and now my eraser has got a mind of its own. No, don't do, don't do okay. Whew. All right, I thought it was gonna erase my x squared up there. It took so long to write it. All right, and so now, all right, so we have this negative 2x and a positive 3x. So those are our like terms, just like we did yesterday. So negative 2x plus 3x would be 
a positive 1x. And then we still have this negative 6 here, right? One like term, and we just bring it down like we did yesterday. And there's the finished result of our multiplication problem with our, with our two binomials. All right, so now uh, if we shift gears and um, we move to the next problem here, all right? And so once again, all right, we have our binomial. So we're going to represent this link with 2x, and then we had the minus 3 here. We're going to take our 3x plus 5 and represent the two links with 3x and the links here with 5. And then once again, we're going to find the, in, the area of each individual rectangle. So now 3x times 2x, that would be 6x squared. 3x times negative 3, that would be negative 9x. All right, and then 5 times 2x, that would be a positive 10x. And 5 times negative 3 would be a negative 15. All right, so you can see, and then once again, now we can see we have a good view of all four of our terms. It's really easy to pick out our like terms, so I only have the 1x squared term, so I can bring it down like this. All right, now my like terms are these two middle terms right here. These are my x terms. All right, so 10x plus negative 9x would be a positive 1x. And you could just write it as positive x. You don't have to show the 1. I'm doing that for emphasis right now. And then once again, we have this one lonely regular number. So I'm going to bring that negative 15 down right here. All right. And then you can see that we have 1x squared term, 1x term, 1 number term. That's when you know you're done is when you see that all your like terms have combined. combined. You have one um, term for each power of your variable. All right, so now let's have you do some practice problems. So here's what I would like you to do. I would like you to pause the video, and I would like you to attempt both problems one and two now, and then turn the video on and see how you do. And I'll just work a little bit here as you watch. So our first product here, all right, you should have gotten negative 3x squared. The next one should have been negative 6x. Now our product here should have been negative 8x. And we get negative 16 here. Now when you combine like terms, negative 3x squared. All right. And then negative 14x and negative 16. All right, there's the first one. Now, let's see how you did on the next one here. All right, so your first product should have been, ooh, not that. All right, so let's get rid of that guy. All right, I don't know why the thickness keeps changing, but you should have 12x squared, a negative 6x. All right, a negative 30x and then a positive 15 for your area. All right, now if you combine like terms, you your final answer should have been 12x squared, and then combine your two like terms here, minus 36x, and then plus 15. All right, once again, pause the video and attempt problems three and four. All right, let's see how you did on these. All right, so your first thing, notice that you have to do, all right, is that these weren't labeled for you, so you wanted to label those. Now, one trick that you can do is I always put my X term first, so even though it's second, all right, I would label it like this. And remember, you always take the sign in front, so that's a negative 2X, so when I rewrite it here, that has to be a negative 2X there. All right, and then I'm gonna put the negative x here and the positive 12 here. All right, and then once again, your first product should have been a 2x squared. The next one should have been a negative 3x. You should have had a negative 24x here and then a positive 36. All right, and then once you combine like terms, you should have had 2x squared minus 27x and then plus 36. All right, so there's your answer there. Now, if we look at our next problem here, 
All right, so once again, if you label it, 2x squared here, positive 3 here, negative x here, positive 4 here. So your first area should have been negative 2x squared. Your next one would have been negative 3x here. We would have had an 8. Oh, I made a mistake. I'll have to go back. This is 8x squared. And then if I go back here, uh, I totally uh, miss, um, multiplied here with my exponent. All right. So going back to what we talked about yesterday, all right, the negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, but then I have x to the first times x squared. That would be x cubed right there, not x squared. Big difference because notice now these two are not like terms. And then my final area would have been a positive 12. And then notice now none of these are like terms once I corrected my exponent. So I just bring each individual term down. So negative 2 and then x cubed. Now typically what we do is we try to write it in descending powers of x. Um, it doesn't um, necessarily have to be written this way, but this is kind of the typical way that mathematicians um, will write answers. So they just write it in descending powers of x. Now technically your answer is still correct as long as you have all four of these terms. All right, so now let's finish um, today with two more problems. Um, and just to show you that it doesn't matter um, what terms we have, we follow the same process and the same rules the whole time. So notice now when we multiply our two binomials here, we have two variables. But this term is still going to be 3x. This right here will be just negative 1y. This would be 2x squared. And then this length would be plus y. And we still label everything the same way. We still do everything the same way. But we, now we just have to kind of account for both variables when we multiply. But now when I define my first area, 2 times 3 is 6. x squared times x is x cubed. Now when I find this area, I have this negative 1 times 2. That gives me negative 2. Now there are no other x's to multiply, so I just bring that x squared over. There are no other y's to multiply here, so I just bring the y over. And then when I look at this one, all right, I have 3 times the 1, so that's 3. Now once again, there's no x's to multiply, so I just have the 1x. There's no other y's to multiply, so I have the 1y. And then my final guy here, I have the positive 1 times the negative 1, so that would be a negative 1. And then y times y is y squared. All right, and then once again, when you look at this, all right, no like terms, so I just take each term. In this case, you can just write them all. So typically when we have mixed variables, all right, you can just write them in any order you want. So I'm just going to bring each term down since there are no like terms. All right. So to wrap up today, here's what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. I want you to do this one last example and then check in and let's see how you did. All right, well, hopefully you aren't feeling lost in the woods after this wonderful lesson on multiplying polynomials. But let's wrap it up here and see how you did. So once again, negative 1 times negative 1, you should have gotten a positive 1. x squared times x squared should have given you x to the fourth. Negative 1 times 3 would be negative 3. And once again, we just have the x squared and we have the y. Negative 1 times 4 would be negative 4, and then we have x squared and y cubed. And then finally, we have 4 times 3, which is a positive 12. y cubed and y would be y to the fourth. And then finally, all right, no like terms here, so I'm just going to bring them all down. So x to the fourth minus 3x squared y minus 4x squared y cubed and positive 12y to the fourth 
my pin made it. All right, and that wraps up today's work. All right, so I will see you next time. Take care of yourselves. See ya.